Good morning, everyone. My name is Ian Wu, and we are the full IoT device project using the A-Brain computer interface. On the left, we have Shakir Tardif. On the left of him, we have Adam Frank Howard. We have Ashley Dopney and Dylan Suzo. Our customer sponsor for this project is Dr. Lance Mandela, and unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it today because he had to be grand-related about work. And our faculty advisor is Dr. Ben Mandela. So the essence of our project is to be able to use the Emotive Epoch headset, which is a neural headset that measures electrode cytogram data, and it recognizes specific mental commands and then translates them into uh, different actions within the IoT network. So the IoT network consists of three light bulbs, one receptacle, as well as an RC card that is utilized as proof of concept for wheelchair control. We see this as being an important technology for our system technologies that can translate to help people with disabilities. So the image on the front we have is the Emotive Epoch headset. It reads brainwaves from the user, sends it over a web server, and then it targets different IoT devices. So these are our customer requirements that we developed with our customer. The first one is utilization of the Emotive Epoch headset to control connected IoT devices. The second is to have system redundancy, since this technology is not completely accurate at this one time. The third is system response time. The fourth is safety, so our proof of concept wheelchair will not uh, hit obstacles. Our fifth is having a specific capacity for a power supply, which is approximately 20 minutes. And sixth is discretization of IoT devices, which will map specific mental commands to different combinations of lighting states. And the seventh is to have level of fidelity and accuracy of the wheelchair when going forward in the first. So these are our engineering requirements that were translated in from the customer requirements. So the first one, the most important one, is utilization of this headset. So we need to have specific sample rates to ensure a decent system response time, as well as we need it to be 100 feet within the device for our client to see for Bluetooth communication. The second is for failsafe, so for system redundancy. This system redundancy will allow different devices to control the IoT besides the headsets. So it'll be able to be controlled from a web server as well as a custom GUI application. The fourth is um, for safety standards. So we're going to utilize a distance sensor in the front of the proof of concept wheelchair to avoid obstacles, and we need to have a specific ranging accuracy of approximately plus or minus 10 millimeters for um, adequate obstacle avoidance. The fifth is the supply and regulation of the wheelchair system. Again, as I said before, we have to adhere to approximately 20 minutes of uh, runtime. That's straight through. And we need, so we need a specific capacity for a battery in terms of milliampere hours to Achieve that. And the sixth is concurrent control of IoT devices. This will map different mental commands to different states. So, for example, if you were thinking for a push command or a pull command, we can map that to different permutations or combinations of lighting states. So, we have push map to all three light bulbs on, or push pull map to only two light bulbs on. This will increase ease of use of the system so that it's not a strain on the user. And the last is accuracy of the wheelchair going forward in reverse. This it needs to be done using some type of environmental feedback loop. So we are using encoders to measure the RPMs of each of the motors and then providing it to a proportional integral derivative controller to uh, modulate the different uh, duty cycle of each of the motor to have them go forward and reverse. I will now pass, pass it off to Shakir Kardet, who will go over constraints, uh, couple standards, as well as functional overview. Good morning, everyone. A um, couple of the system constraints are these are our system constraints. A couple of the key points here are the Z Wave hardware compatibility restriction. This means that all the main devices that we use for our project have to adhere to the Z Wave protocol. The Z Wave protocol is just a common standard used by IoT devices. Another um, key constraint here is the software development kit restricted to the Java programming language. Now, the guys who are in charge of the GUI interface that you'll see later, um, have to be proficient with the Java programming language in order to successfully communicate with it. Um, as anyone who is not who's a part of the computer engineering curriculum understands that Java is not formally taught to us as part of our curriculum, so some time had to be um, set aside to become proficient with the language. Here are our standards that we need for our project. Um, some of the common standards rely on uh, the U.S. residential uh, standards for power consumption, as well as the FCC regulations for 
the transmitter and receiver interference. Another common standard is the Patrick Lee Field 2.11, which is a, simply a common wireless local area network standard. We also, some of the uncommon standards that we are using for our, our specific project uh, rely on the Z-Wave Alliance, which is for our mesh network um, and fair and interface, as well as the RFC 723 series, which is simply a web server protocol. Here are, is our functional overview of the project. Um, starting from the left, you can see that the motor test set send is dispensed to a specific user in the state of the user. This data is sent as Bluetooth commands to the connected GUI interface. This is then sent over to the web server through post request, which is then connected to a Raspberry Pi. This Raspberry Pi is, is what's controlling all of the connected devices that we're using, uh, such as the wheelchair, the light, and receptacles within the project. I will now hand it over to Anna Pankor to discuss um, design alternatives. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we had a few uh, design alternatives, one being to pick the Z Wave versus AB. Um, we chose Z Wave because it was uh, developer friendly. Um, it, a lot of research has already been done into it. We chose the Arduino Z Uno as a market controller because it already has Z Wave support, making it adequate for our system and it's easy to integrate. And we chose the Ultrasonic in a different sense of, um, compared to the others due to it having a wider point of view and it was more accurate and fit our customer requirement of plus or minus 10 millimeters. And now is our uh, RC Presto system. At the top we have a servo, um, on the right we have a distance sensor, and then on the bottom we have an H-bridge which controls two motors bidirectionally, and then we're powered by a football battery to our Xeno. And on the left we have our top layer design of the RC power schematic on uh, the front here, the distance sensor on the top, and then it proceeds the PCD, um, the each bridge, and the back. And on the right we have uh, the bottom layer, which just holds the motors and the wheels in the pivot in the front. And now we'll go into the we'll talk about uh, the job. Uh, to implement the system, we're going to see, uh, in order to meet that customer requirement, we designed a, our own custom uh, UI. Uh, on the left there, you'll see the first tab, which has icons on it. You can click on the icons, and they will toggle the state of the, those devices that are uh, corresponding to those. The sliders above the lights will change the brightness of your lights. Uh, on the top right of that screen, you'll see two indicators. One is signal strength, and the other is battery level. Both of those measure, uh, measure from the headset. Uh, on the bottom right, there are selectors for your target, whether you're targeting your home devices like the lights and the receptacle, or whether you're targeting the wheelchair. Uh, below that is the selector for the cognitive or expressive suite, which are two different modes of uh, controlling the headset. Um, on the right, you'll see a real time graph. Uh, did, when the headset sends it, uh, reach a range and sends a signal to the uh, system, uh, you'll, get it, uh, you'll get an action card between zero and one, and that will graph it over what it is over real time. Uh, on the left is scene customization. Uh, you can click on one of those commands and uh, adjust the sliders and click save. Uh, th these will set defaults to for when you open up your uh, the program in the future. And you, if you actuate that command, you'll get uh, you'll put brightness levels at what you set it to. On the right is the fourth tab. It's the wheelchair tab. When it's open, uh, you can use the WASD keys to control the wheelchair. Uh, w goes forward, S goes backwards, uh, A and D go left and right, and in for, uh, space break, uh, breaks the system. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Ashton to talk to talk about the test results. For each of the engineering requirements, we had to come up with a way in which we could verify the results. So we classified each verification method using IADTs either inspection, analysis, demonstration, or testing. The results that we intend to demonstrate to you today are the um, control of IAT devices, the um, fail-safe method in which we have an alternative means of controlling the IAT devices in the event of a headset failure, the fidelity and the accuracy of the RC car, such that if it's driving straightaways, it does not deviate more than 10 millimeters to either side, 
The test results show that we can classify each engineering requirement if it was met as passing and if it was not as failing or a combination of pass and fail. The most notable requirement that was not fully passing all of our tests was the IoT control using the cognitive suite. Um, the cognitive suite wasn't as reliable as the emotive suite because um, we were only able to reliably communicate two commands using the headset, whereas we initially intended to communicate four commands for four different directions of the RC car, being forward, reverse, left, and right. So instead, we used two commands to control forward, reverse, left, and right. And we used the emotive suite to determine whether or not we were going forward and reverse or left and right. The plan and schedule Gantt chart shows over the semester the amount of time that we plan to spend on the project versus the time that we actually spent on the project on a week to week basis. We underestimated the amount of time that we thought that we would spend on the project. The majority of the time was spent um, training the headset so that we could have a reliable training profile to accurately train the IoT devices. And we didn't account for the amount of time that it took to implement the printed circuit board into our design. We thought that it would be a seamless integration. However, it uh, created more problems than we expected it to. So in conclusion, um, our project was not a full success, but we were able to demonstrate the overall goal of the project, which is to control IoT devices using EEG data in real time. We were able to use two commands, mental commands, to translate to four different actions using the expressive suite, which is more deterministic. So we believe that given more advanced uh, resources, as well as research and development, this type of solution could actually be feasible in a home environment. But we have concluded at this point in time that the brain control technology is too non-deterministic and too unreliable to accurately control devices, at least in a commercial setting. Uh, now we will show a few demos that we have that we demonstrate various control of IoT devices. So the top left is our custom software that's streaming data. So it's showing that we're receiving uh, signals and action power from the EEG headset. On the bottom left is the emotive software that is provided by the manufacturer. It essentially shows the different commands that the user is thinking, and it provides a box to help uh, pair your different commands with, uh, say, push or pull, or left and right. And the user in the bottom right is wearing the headset, and the top is what we're showing which device control of. The top right, right now, we're showing the RC car function. So as you can see in the box, you just push the box, which corresponds to the forward command. You can see that again. It's just on a loop, and it goes forward. The second one is demonstrating the reverse with the pull command. So for this one, you can see that the pivot in the front actually kicked out a little bit, so it caused it to start off. But since we're using real-time monitoring for the PID controller, you can see that it has corrected action and it changes the due cycle of the different motors. So this doesn't always happen, but when it does, the PID controller tries to adjust and it ends up stopping around the same location that it So this uh, video is demonstrating the left and right command. So in order to target these different actions, Adam had to do a deterministic action, which was clenching his teeth. And this demonstrates that it can change what commands we're focusing. So it said push maps to left and pull maps to right. So you can see when he pulls, <coughs> it will move to that direction. So right there, it's pull. And then there's a four second timer around just so you don't keep initiating commands one after each other. And you see push, and we'll go to the other direction. And again, it will translate to action. So this shows the distance sensor provides some level of corrective action. 
So when he initiates the pull command, it'll go forward. And then the leg will stop, because it does, in fact, set the, the obstacle in front and provides the correct action. This is demonstrating on the home network. So this is targeting specifically the receptacle device. So when you close the box, you can see that the receptacle turns on and the phone lights up because it's charging. And on the corresponding GUI application, you can see that the state changes to show that it's on in the on state. So in order to target this network, we have three different devices. We have three uh, lights as well as one receptacle. And in order to target the receptacle, he needed to punch his teeth first and then push his full maps to one light and full maps to the receptacle. <coughs> and this is showing the uh, lighting network. So when you push, one light turned on. Pulls one light comes on as well. And then he pushed, it toggled off, and then it toggled back on, we initiated it again. So every time the same command is initiated one after each other, it just toggles whatever the lighting state was on. Right now, each command is only mapped to one uh, LED, I mean, one light bulb, just to show that, uh, just to demonstrate well, but we can, in fact, map different, can different commands to different combinations of light states. So, for example, using the scene customization that Dylan showed earlier, you can map the push command to multiple states of the lights. And we now we can put questions.